It is just a touch after 5 p.m. on a Tuesday afternoon. Thank you very much for taking the time to be with us. This is another epic episode of 10 for Life, which is proudly brought to you by Liberty. So thank you very much for taking the time to be with us. We hope by the end of this show, you will have learned a lot from what we are actually focusing on. Remember, we are still continuing with differential calculus. We will be looking at other concepts starting next week. But for this week, we're still continuing with uh, what we've been looking at for the past two or three weeks, which is differential calculus. If you want access to a lot of more exciting content that will help you build your math from grade 10, grade 11, and grade 12, do make sure that you download our awesome, awesome app, which is the Tenfold Education uh, app, which is available on your favorite iOS or your uh, Google Play Store. If you download that app, it will help you to build content from grade 10 up to grade 12. It has very awesome videos. It has got assessments. It also has great things that you can actually use, immediate answers and responses that will help you to build yourself and prepare yourself for uh, your exams, be it the June exams or the preliminary or anything else. Remember our show, Run weekdays from 5 p.m. until 6 p.m. every Monday to Thursday except of course on holidays so tomorrow since it's not uh, a normal working day we're not gonna be here we will meet you guys again on Thursday so do make sure that you don't miss that we're now going to continue and look at um, what we can deem as a very int uh, interesting introduction that will help us to make sense of differential calculus since we are busy with it we want you to understand what exactly is differential calculus and how do you actually use it in, in the real world and why are we even bothering ourselves to spend so much time on it so we're gonna go to an intro video when we come back there's a lot of very interesting content that we're going to look at to assist you to make more sense of differential calculus so let's go check out this intro video calculus is a powerful and magical mathematical tool that allows us to make predictions of future outcomes and reconstruct the past in order to be successful at differential calculus, you will need to understand the concepts of limits, differentiation by first principles, differentiation using rules, equations of tangents to graphs, cubic functions, optimization, and rates of change. In preparation for your exams, make sure to watch all of the Financial Maths Back to Basics and demonstration of concept videos and attempt all of the assessment questions at the end of the lesson. Once you've mastered those skills, the enrichment and career videos will take you beyond the classroom. Differential calculus is 35 plus minus 3 marks in the final exam, which is about 24% of Maths Paper 1. Right, right. Thank you very much for staying with us, guys. That was actually an awesome, awesome video. That actually helps us to understand why we're actually bothering ourselves with differential calculus. From what I hear there, it actually contributes a lot of marks when it comes to your paper one. I think if you add differential calculus and functions, you actually get half of paper one. So it's really weighing a lot of marks. So you have to make sure that you understand uh, how to handle this differential calculus. Remember, it is divided into three portions, which is uh, differentiation, the functions, as well as the application of calculus. So it's actually very awesome. And we've been trying to help you to make sense of this. And I hope by now you understand a lot of uh, what we've been looking at up to so far. We will now continue to look at uh, the questions that you sent to us. So please keep sending us those questions that you have via our uh, WhatsApp line or also on Facebook. If you download our app, you also can be able to interact with us via that app. So let's go to a question that was sent to us by uh, Londiwe. Let's go and check out what Londiwe had to say. Hi guys, my name is Londiwe. Can you please help me with this question here? Yeah. Uh... All right, um, thank you for that question. A very nice question indeed. It is asking us to find the derivative from first principle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to read the question with me before we start thinking or discussing how to analyze the question because sometimes you guys don't get the opportunity to view the questions quite well. That's why we want you, when you take these questions and you send them to us, put in some extra time on your show in the video so that we can see. We want to see much more and the other guys also want to see what the question is all about. So do give us some extra time so that we can be able to see what the question really says. So let's go and check on the screen what the question really, really says to us. It says that we need to find 
f prime of x from first principle um, if f of x equals 3 minus x squared plus 2x. So it's a very simple question that is asking you to apply the concept of first principle. The first principle formula always appears in your information sheet. You can just take it there and then use it to find the derivative from first principle. Remember, when we say from first principle, we mean from first principle. You can't derive it by the power rule, otherwise you're not gonna get any marks on this. So let's see what we uh, can do on this question. First of all, it is important for us to understand that the formula for first principle says the derivative from first principle can be given by the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x everything divided by h. Now I always say this, there are two things that I see here. We just need to find what f of x is and find what is f of x plus h. Once you've got these two things and you subtract them, this thing is going to be very easy for you to actually figure it out. So let's continue and see what we need. We actually need f of x plus h because the f of x part is part of this question. It is part of the question. It comes with the question. We only need to worry ourselves with f of x plus h. So let's see now. If f of x is what is given here, I don't really like the fact that the order of this quadratic function is not the standard order. So I'm going to start by fixing that first. I will start with the square term, which is negative x squared. So I'm going to put negative x squared first and then follow by the 2x. You don't really need to do this, guys. I'm only doing it because I just prefer dealing with quadratics in standard order. And then because I've got f of x, I'm not going to try and find f of x plus h. What is f of x plus h? Well, f of x plus h is what you get when you substitute x with x plus h. There's a minus there, so I'm going to write that. There's my x here. I'm going to write x plus h. There's a square. I'm going to put that square. There's a plus 2. There's my plus 2 again. There's an x. So every time you see x, you're just replacing it with x plus h. There's a plus 3, so I'm actually going to write plus 3 there. Now we're going to try and simplify this first part here. This is a binomial squared. I hope you guys know how to square binomial without creating two brackets. If it's a problem for you, you can always create two brackets. So this is going to become x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Now the second part here, the 2 into x plus h, simplifies to 2x plus 2h plus 3. If you simplify further, let's see what will happen on this one. We have to multiply in by the minus now. You'll basically have minus x squared, minus 2xh, and minus h squared, plus 2x, plus 2h, and plus 3. Right. Now, once you have found the value of f of x plus h as well as f of x, it's just a matter of taking them and substituting them in your function, your formula for first principle, the f prime formula. Substitute f of x and f of x plus h and then simplify. There are people who prefer simplifying in the formula. I find it tedious, so I just always try to work out f of x plus h on the side and then pick it up and then paste it on the formula. It's going to work much better for you when you substitute. So let's see what will happen when we do that. The formula for first principle, remember, says f prime of x is the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x with everything divided by h. Now if I simplify this further, I need now to substitute what we just found as our f of x expression right there at the top. So this is going to be the limit as h approaches 0. So f of x plus h is all this that you see here. This minus x squared minus 2xh minus h squared plus 2x plus 2h plus 3. Right, so we need to subtract now. We need to minus. So I'm going to put minus f of x. What is f of x? Well, f of x from the original question was um, negative x squared plus 2x plus 3. So minus x squared plus 2x plus 3. Everything must be divided by h. Okay, fine. So now let's see what will happen when we simplify this. This is going to be the limit as h tends to 0 of negative x squared minus 2xh minus h squared. Be careful not to lose any terms when you are doing this part because if it's got very um, congested terms, you might make a mistake by forgetting a term or messing up a sign. So be careful of that. Right. Now this is negative. That must multiply into all these terms of f of x. Negative by negative will give us positive x squared. Negative times a positive will actually give us negative 2x and negative times 3 will give us minus 3 with everything divided by h. All right. Now, when you get here, all the terms that come from f of x, all these terms must disappear. If any one of them is not disappearing, then it means you made a mistake. Every time when you work with the first principle formula, 
all the terms that come from f of x must be somehow uh, cancelled out or subtracted by the terms that are on the original f of x plus h term. If any one of them survives, then it means you made a mistake. You must just go back and check what is going on with your signs or maybe any term that you might have forgotten and simplify this further. When you look at this minus x squared, this one here will subtract this one out and then the plus 2x here will subtract the minus 2x out and 3 will subtract minus 3 out. So once I see that all the terms of f of x are gone, I know that whatever I'm doing is actually correct. It's like a checkpoint. It helps me to see that I'm still progressing very well and it's actually quite awesome. So now if you continue further, you'll see that the limit as h approaches 0 is basically negative 2xh minus h squared plus 2h, right? Everything divided by this h. We're now going to take out a common factor limit s approaches zero of h appears in all of them so i'm going to take out h as a common factor leaving myself with negative 2x minus h plus 2 everything divided by h if you simplify further those h's are now going to divide into each other h divided by h is 1 which means the h is gone now the limit as h approaches zero is now going to leave us with minus 2x um, minus h plus 2. Once you are here, once you have removed the denominator, the h on the denominator, that is always um, the troubling uh, variable or the troubling term there. The h on the denominator, you can't substitute h as zero because it gives you something that is indeterminate. So the whole, the whole thing that we're doing is just about removing that h on the denominator. Once it's gone, it means you are safe now, you can substitute to h as zero. So let's see what will happen if I do that. This is going to become negative 2x minus this h is actually a zero plus 2, which will eventually leave me with negative 2x plus 2. And this is going to be the derivative from first principle. It is a nice question indeed. It actually helps you to understand how to work with the first principle. If you've been following what we've been doing up to so far, you will see that it's not actually a complicated thing to work with. Once you understand the technicalities of working with this, it is always easy for you to get those free marks. It's around five marks for you, you can actually always collect them. We will now go to an ad break. When you return, we will uh, get another question from Sia, so stay with us.